Hi, everyone. Welcome to Radiant Living, Inspiring Humanity to Thrive. I'm your host, Marissa B. Today, I have with me someone who's had three decades of experience. She works with earth shaman traditions. She is a medicine woman, a ceremonialist, and she is a folk herbalist. I'd like to welcome Naomi Amaya Love. Hi, Naomi. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored. Well, I'm thrilled to have you here. I want to find out, first of all, because you do some wonderful things, how did you get started in the healing arts? That's a beautiful question. I will try to uh, streamline the answer. Um, I was kind of like introduced to the healing. I had hippie parents. And so there was always uh, herb books around and medicine books. And I was very keen to Native American traditional teachers and healers and animal medicine decks. And so as a kid, I was just kind of like, it was in the field, which I'm, that was probably the greatest blessing of my childhood. And I really found my refuge with the plants. And so it's just started then. And then it went into kind of like, ooh, witchy craft, magical books and spells, you know, when I was like 12. And then it evolved into this whole thing that it is that I do now, which we can't even really put words to. <laughs> well, but I mean, three decades as a, yeah. um, a, a, and it's a community medicine woman. Well, yeah. And what I mean by that is working one-on-one -on -one and with groups, with communities around <laughs> the world for 30 years and being sort of the person that people came to for whatever ailed them. And how did you get involved with the herbalist aspect of it because it's kind of a melding isn't it of medicine yeah. woman folk herbalist yeah it's so I've studied like uh somebody added it up it's like 150 different modalities so um I'm a Gemini so I get mm -hmm. bored so mm -hmm. I just was like oh, taking in all the information and gathering what I can so the plant aspect again when I was little um, I had a very unique um, traumatic childhood mm -hmm. and I found myself hanging out with the plants a lot. Mm -hmm. And so they were my sort of introduction into herbalism. And so I started studying them at a very young age. And then I ended up apprenticing with different herbalists and healers and teachers and mm -hmm. worked at the herb farm and studied with different people. And then I ended up going to herb school mm -hmm. for three years and making medicine. And, you know, it just has continued ever since. And herbal medicine is, I am technically a clinical herbalist, but as mm -hmm. I get older, I'm less clinical. I find it boring. So I call myself a folk herbalist because it's more mm -hmm. like homebrew yes. magic and potions and medicines and stuff, you know? And so you actually make products for clients. Um, I do. Yeah, I don't, I haven't had my apothecary open for the last few years, but um, I do have an apothecary. It's called Ritual mm -hmm. Alchemy. And I right now have flower essences and I sell sacred incense blends of different resins from mm -hmm. around the world and blends for ceremony. And then I also make cordials and tinctures and Mm -hmm. all sorts of things. I mean, making that's medicine a lot of work, is like right? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And I think what I've come to realize is that I don't want medicine making to be my job mm -hmm. because it when you make something your job, you have to hustle, like you have to do it when you don't want to, you know? Yes. Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like to make medicine when I make medicine, you know, when mm -hmm. I'm inspired and that way it, it, the infusion that is a part of that medicine mm -hmm. is the inspiration and the love instead of the like, oh, I have to make tinctures or something, you know, because yes. we all get filled with life. It's a hustle mm -hmm. a little bit sometimes. So I don't want to turn that into a hustle, mm -hmm. especially when someone's very successful, because yeah. the more successful you are, the more people are looking for your products. And it really is a f yeah. if more yeah. than a full time job. Yeah. I'm like small batches mm -hmm. when I get like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Now explain to me about ceremonialist. How is that incorporated in your work? Because that is a, that's a big topic yeah. to provide that to communities. My, my life is ceremony. And the to me, ceremony is about, and living life as ceremony is about the approach that you take in the way that you live your life. And it's to me about being in a right way. 
we have a way of living mm. with this earth that's not living with it. It's living on it. Yes. We have a way of connecting with people, connecting at them. Mm -hmm. We have a way of missing one another. And the art of ceremony to me is about slowing down enough to welcome in your higher self, to welcome in that presence that we all innately have somewhere in there and to then relate to the world from that place, from a place of listening, from a place of relating, from a place of being in presence with one another. And so weaving ceremony in and through at every session that I've done with clients, whether it's hands-on or talk therapy or mind-body psychotherapy or energy work, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. it's a ceremony. We look at the experience of somebody coming in that's a ceremony. Mm -hmm. Somebody coming in, what you're coming to me for, what you're coming to me with is really about you placing on the altar what it is that you can't hold anymore, the burdens that you're bearing that are yours or not yours to ask for support mm -hmm. in some way. And that is a ceremony. And when we can turn these like I don't know, the mundane into something more ceremonial. Yes. Like, ceremonial. It's like magic. Mm -hmm. And it makes life, uh, honestly, it makes life more tolerable. Mm -hmm. And it's so, funny that you say that. That's a lovely way of looking at it, that when someone comes to you, it is ceremony. It it's is. a, it's a, it's a lovely altar, way to look at it. Yes. If they're, if they're coming and laying on my table, they're laying on my mm -hmm. altar. If they're coming and laying on, sitting with me, they're sitting with me at the mm -hmm. altar you know, and we have this way of, I, yesterday I did this beautiful photo shoot at the Ia, which is one of my most favorite places in nature here in Maui. And I guided these women that I didn't know because they were there for the photo shoot. My mm -hmm. friend just kind of got these folks together and we're under the most majestic ancient elder tree mm -hmm. that I have seen in years. It was this elder it held so, it holds so much knowledge and presence. Mm -hmm. And we're at the sacred river in the sacred valley, the house of the moon. And I could tell that none of them were connecting to where oh, they wow. were. And I have a, a keen ability of sight. And it breaks my heart to see that we're living in this world mm -hmm. and we're not seeing one another. We're not feel we're feeling them, but like as an impact, that's different mm -hmm. to truly feel what somebody is going through, to truly feel the nature's presence, to feel like the wind blow on your skin and to hear the ancestors message in that wind, to see the fog gently caressing mm -hmm. the mountains. There's so much, so many messages inside of that for each of us. And I could see that it, they weren't connected to that. Mm -hmm. We're so, we live in a world where we're so we're hustling and mm -hmm. we're so self-absorbed because that's, especially in America, because we're like yes, little yes. islands, right? We're little independent islands. And so there isn't this community, there isn't this network, there isn't this ability to just tune in and listen. And I could really see that yesterday. And I was like, oh, that makes me so sad. Mm -hmm. It like breaks my heart because imagine being that tree and just desire, like you have all this wisdom and all this knowledge and nobody sees you. That's yeah. a metaphor yeah. also for the crones and the elders yeah. of today. We don't see them. We're right. Exactly. To them. Exactly. We're and there's so much magic afoot. And yet we don't take the time to really sit there with it, experience it. Yeah. And it's true that we're hustling around. It's, it is sad. It's a, it's a sad state that we're in. And as so you said, we live on this planet and not along with it. Yes. And if we can like go into the ceremony of it, like I just had, um, I will not cry. My kitty was just spirited away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. As a witchy gal, our familiars are, our so like they're an expression, mm -hmm. they're an extension of us in so many ways. And so doing this process of grief, which is awful, it's mm -hmm. like on the floor screaming, wailing at the tragedy of mm -hmm. it. And I took, I've been taking this experience and I wrote it, I wrote his story as a myth to share the myth of this ethereal kitty 
that mm-hmm. I got to guardian for just 21 months. And to tell the story as a myth, all of the facts are there, but it turns this awful tragedy mm-hmm. into a story to be told, a story to be felt. And I feel like that's part of living life as ceremony. It's like turning these awful experiences Mm -hmm. into something like I'm going through the grief as a ceremony. And then when we're inside of that ceremony doesn't always have a beginning and an end. Mm -hmm. It's not a straight line. It's a fabric that's woven. And so there's no stages of grief because you don't follow any format when Mm -hmm. you're grieving. Like there's exactly at all, you know, I'm like, I'm just like in a jar just being thrown Mm -hmm. around my mind and my emotions and all the things that are happening. Right. So what if we took the hardships that we're experiencing and turned it into a ceremony? Mm -hmm. What if that too was a ceremony? Well, because it's so important. The ceremony is important. It's that time that we're taking to recognize this particular moment, this particular event. Yeah. Uh, It's so true. And this is one question I do want to ask you because you've done this for so long, because you've done this one-on-one in person. And of course, sadly, we all have experienced what's transpired with this pandemic. Now we're out of it. We're in the post pandemic. Has it been difficult to during, first of all, during that time to connect with people? Because I know that you were connecting with them via the internet, via online. Did you notice that it was much more difficult? And has it changed now? Are you going back to more of what you had before the pandemic? Great question. So before the pandemic happened, I was um, I had left my practice uh, in person to kind of go wander. And Mm -hmm. I started to build the online aspect Mm -hmm. of my work. And so when COVID hit, I already had that solid kind of going. I found that the beginning of COVID um, was actually kind of easy for me because I had been wandering for a couple of years and I was like, I need a Mm -hmm. break. Yes. (laughs) I'm also a hermit. So um, I'm like half hermit, half extrovert. Mm -hmm. So I needed that time to go in. And my not school was super successful at that time. And then I noticed that as COVID continued, um, then it started to wear on me. Mm -hmm. Like now I'm tired of being a hermit. Mm -hmm. Now I'm actually, I need in-person work to ground me because Uh, I have for the last couple of years been living in the clouds, which is like living in the ether Mm -hmm. and as an air sign (laughs) already. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And an air rising, like I have an earth moon, but I'm like, you know, and then I had the ethereal kitty pixie king. I'm like, I was float kind of floating. And Mm -hmm. so now I'm definitely ready to like be inside of, I need my hands in the dirt. I need Mm -hmm. my hands. I need actual people in my field um, the online part, I'm kind of, I need a break, you know, Mm -hmm. from always being Mm -hmm. right. Right. So you're going to start to go more um, in person for, you know, cause sometimes this, a ceremony or ritual is like two or three hours. So sitting for that long Mm -hmm. is a lot, you know, like when you're with a person, you're moving around, you have to just like Mm -hmm. sit still, like, you know, right. You know, so I definitely noticed that, um, I just had COVID for the first time, actually. Oh, wow. It was, um, this year has been an ass kicker for sure. But um, I did COVID as a ceremony and I still have some of the long COVID symptoms and I'm still doing that as a ceremony as well. It's like, okay, let me go into this. Mm-hmm. And what I also feel about when we're doing things as a ceremony, when we change that lens and we start mm-hmm. thinking from that place, it's almost like we're in the state of allowing Mm -hmm. allowing what needs to happen, allowing ourselves to feel, allowing ourselves to go through the process so that we're not bypassing what arises because there was Mm -hmm. a lot of emotions that came up with COVID. (laughs) There was some stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. (laughs) And I was like, whoa, (laughs) thank God I have some skills to navigate this. Yeah. Yeah. I was, Dora, I was very fearful of getting it. And uh, of course, you know, you still can. And so 
that yeah. presents somewhat of a problem when you're dealing with clients. I mean, prior to the pandemic, my clients were all in person, one on one. Um, yeah. When it hit, and it was very bad. I'm in New York. It was very bad here. I mean, it, it, there no one was going anywhere, and so all my clients, I had to shift to telehealth online. And some have not come back, and others have, and so you still have that that I don't want to say worry, but that caution. Yeah. of how to how to um interact yeah. with with one like, another i feel like it shifted something has shifted for me as as well as really um i'm on maui right now but we just had the really the fires not just yes. in Maya, but in kula and olinda and it was quite intense to be here during that time as mm -hmm. well and and I've been, yeah, whatever, there's been so many things, but mm -hmm. that really showed me for me that I need community mm -hmm. because being in a place, like I tend to hermit up here in the clouds on the side of the mountain, mm -hmm. house of the sun in the clouds. Mm -hmm. And there's this feeling of like, wow, I actually like need to be with community mm -hmm. because going through a catastrophe alone is quite intense. It was oh, so absolutely. intense. And to be by myself and to, it's like, I need actually like mm -hmm. people around to ground. I need actual community, mm -hmm. like people that I in person connect with mm -hmm. and not just any community. It has to be people that see you. Like we were talking mm -hmm. about the beginning. I don't want to, in, in Hawaii, my experience, not of Hawaiian people, but of the Haoles that live here, I guess, the white folk, there's mm -hmm. this feeling of like being that elder tree and people just walking by because we're so oh, self wow. that we're just really so eager to talk about ourselves and so eager to share our own story that we're missing something magical that's straight in front of us, you know? Yes, so I, I know. Active listening, active listening is very difficult for many people. I just uh, listened to this beautiful book by my favorite author, Dr. Martin Shaw. He's a mythological storyteller mm -hmm. and it was called um courting the wild twin and everything that he said in his beautiful poetry of mythos was like nectar to my soul and it was basically that what we're talking about mm. and i was like <laughs> taking it all absorbing like, everything yeah, yes this and he's like it's the thing that we're it's because we're not listening it's so true that's true. And I think, and we've all learned that in courses that, you know, oftentimes people are sitting there waiting for what they're going to say next. And they're really not actively listening to the person that they're speaking with. Yeah. And how many people say they're taught, you know, an individual talks at another individual, they're not speaking with each other and they're not communicating effectively. It's difficult. You it's know, is it in like, how do you actually hear, you know, we have societally we're taught you know, to learn things. So like in herbalism, mm -hmm. it's like, this is what dandelion's for. Here's its name. This is the color. This is the mm -hmm. family. This is the species. Here's its medicinal benefits. Here's its plant monograph. That's all great. Mm -hmm. Dandy. But what if we sat with the plant and what if right. we like looked at it and watched that it has the sun and the moon? Mm -hmm. Wow. And it grows through cracks in the middle of freaking new york city yes absolutely and like is the first food of the bees like what if we learned through nature not uh, not to discount knowledge it's so, right it's a weaving of both both absolutely and oh absolutely to, we end up overriding our own knowing mm -hmm. because we've also been taught to do that that's like how we survive in this world <laughs> mm -hmm. you know is to override our own inner our own guts a lot of times mm -hmm. but like, what if we made the space in the time that we can mm -hmm. create that to sit with the plants, to sit with the person, to sit with the being and to truly listen. I see it mm -hmm. with animals. We misunderstand animals all the time mm -hmm. as an animal and plant person. I'm like, you guys, we're doing it wrong. Yes. <laughs> we're like a little off. Could we just turn that dial so it clicks in? You know, it's not quite fitting. Mm -hmm. we're misunderstanding this existence here and we're missing now, are you it. finding are you finding that some people are starting to get it <laughs> i want to be hopeful 
Mm -hmm. I'll say that. I want to be hopeful. I think that I don't see it a lot. I um I just had this conversation with someone recently that I thought we were on a trajectory of evolution and evolutionary thought and enlightenment and then somehow I was very upset because it appeared that we were regressing or devolving and I was very concerned yeah. and hoping that we're moving forward. I mean, and that's why I started this. Yeah. Look at the United States government. We're not yes. moving forward. Well, big, big thing, right? Big thing. Like um, war in the worlds. We're not necessarily like an eye for an eye is still popular. Yes. Like, and how sad. You know, it's. How sad. We uh, were not, I thought, I think at some point, like when I was in my teens, early twenties, like in herb school, I lived in a teepee, you know, I thought that like, you know, I knew that the systems were effed up. You mm -hmm. know, I knew that pharmaceutical companies were like, not for the people. I knew that doctors, <laughs> you know, like I was mm -hmm. taught, I had known that that was part of my lived experience. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I think that in my thirties, I might've lost touch in some way. And then as I'm in my uh, late forties now, I guess there's this like, Oh my God, like, where, where are we going? Like, I thought we were mm -hmm. you know, alternative medicine. It's pretty popular now. Yes. Being a goddess is like a thing, you know, a womb priestess. There's, mm -hmm. there was literally like no such thing. Like mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. And at the same time, when things get popular, they lose their essence. Mm -hmm. When everybody starts, you know, doing it, it doesn't necessarily hold the same potency because the people that are doing it, let's say we're in our twenties and we're womb priestesses, no offense to anyone, but when we're in our twenties, we haven't journeyed through enough mm -hmm. to be a womb priestess. It's just a fact. We right. haven't journeyed through enough. Part of that journey is what we go through in our lived experience mm -hmm. and then what we learn inside of that. So we end up having these sort of Instagrammable mm -hmm. titles, these Instagrammable yes. healing uh, modalities, mm -hmm. but the people who are doing them are oftentimes haven't gone through enough. Mm -hmm. They haven't embodied like the way that, and this is of course, totally from my lens of my experiences. Mm -hmm. I did apprenticeship through most of my education was mm -hmm. through apprenticing. It was through time. Yes. Like allowing the teachings through repetition, mm -hmm. through the oral tra tradition, receiving the transmission, right. digesting it, embodying it, practicing it, learning from that, doing it again. Mm -hmm. And we don't value that. We, val we don't value the journey right mm -hmm. now. We value getting there. And in the getting there, we're missing a lot. And we're causing a lot of harm. We're not trauma informed. We're not, um, we're doing things to people mm -hmm. that are coming to us. We're telling them really messed up stuff because we're not conscious. Right. We're not listening. So I'm like, I don't know if we're better mm -hmm. or if it just looks better. Well, I mean, I know there are a lot more people that are maybe delving into it and, um, Maybe I don't want to say because there are no regulations because you know, what are regulations, yeah. but there are a lot of different yeah. schools of thought. And so people yeah. follow different things, but the reality is, is that we're really not supposed to be doing anything to anyone or saying anything to anyone really. Right. That's not our job. Like the way, like the way to, I mean, what would be beautiful is if we were in smaller communities and mm -hmm. we had our elders Right? right. I have my elders. You go to your council mm -hmm. and you check yourself. We don't like, I don't want a government regulation. You can't governmentally regulate shamanism. Right. right? But like, we also want to make sure that we're doing it in the right way. Mm -hmm. But we don't know that we're not doing it in the mm -hmm. right way. But we're also not willing to ask. Right. And so that 
that piece. I see it a lot in the younger generations mm-hmm. into this work, you know, and even people my age that are perpetuating um, the spiritual bypassing and the light washing and mm-hmm. the, and I'm like, what are you doing? And they're super popular, like mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of followers. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, but we are still as a humanity, we are attracted to the things that like, we want power, that person has power. We want fame, that person has fame. We want whatever they have, whatever mm-hmm. they're Instagrammable life looks like mm-hmm. we want that so then we're attracting and attracted to that it's sort of like I don't know if you ever watch any reality tv when I had COVID I watched love is blind mm-hmm. and some of the people on this show like they were there they don't see each other they're in two separate rooms mm-hmm. and they're dating a bunch of different people and then at the end they have to choose someone And this guy was like, I chose based on my gut and I chose wrong. And I was like, it wasn't your gut. Yes. Matching. You were choosing not based on your gut at all, but based on trauma. And those, those little glimpses are the things that we're missing because Mm -hmm. we don't, we haven't valued psychology in our world for Mm -hmm. very long. It's kind of new for us to like value mental health. (laughs) <laughs> like going to therapy when I was a kid, that was like a no, like you're right. crazy. Right. So we're just starting to value mental health. We don't understand what is trauma. What is wound mm-hmm. matching? We think we mistake something that is chemistry for, mm-hmm. for we just, uh, I'll say we mistake what we think is chemistry when it's oftentimes a trauma trigger. Mm-hmm. Like we are, we don't have a lot of understanding of that sort of unseen, untouchable aspect of our mm-hmm. lived experience. And it affects every aspect of our life. Right. How we live together. Mm-hmm. And where do you see we're going from here? Where are you going from here? Ooh. First of all, because I you're, <laughs> you could. <laughs> I give up. I'm done. Um, <laughs> I, I, honestly, there, it, that's a great question. I, I really, um, I was kind of known in my career as a womb worker. Mm -hmm. That's how I met you originally. That's how um, one of the groups was from womb working that you did, that you've done. And I still obviously like do it. It's a part of me. Mm -hmm. It's a part of my work, but I pivoted away from it this year because one thing that I noticed is that it's especially for personal healing. Professional training, totally different story Mm -hmm. because professionals oftentimes have some intelligence in the process of healing. They have Mm -hmm. some understanding of how it works. Lay people, most people don't know how healing works. Mm -hmm. They just think they know. Mm -hmm. And so the personal healing journey of the womb has deeply exhausted my soul Mm -hmm. because people don't understand the process. And inside of that, then there's projection and there's not taking responsibility and there's all Mm -hmm. of their stuff comes up and they have no skills because no one's taught them. It's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault. No one taught us how to process, Mm -hmm. how to dive into our inner world Mm -hmm. and understand how to figure out what, what is what in Mm -hmm. there? Because there's a lot that's happening. And so this year I pivoted away from womb work as my focus because I realized that the womb is the greatest pain point for humanity. And Mm. I don't want that to be the access point to working with me. I don't want to be found just through pain. Mm -hmm. And so I would rather be found because you are interested in weaving your life as a ceremony. I would rather be found because you want to learn how to support others in a trauma informed Mm -hmm. way and help connect them to the earth. I want to be found because you want to learn how to listen to the ancient trees Mm -hmm. in the forest and hear the whispers of the ancestors in the wind. I want to be found through magic rather than through pain. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm going. Where you're going. And so how do you think we're doing? Do you think we are going to be able to go in that direction? Do you think that um, there are going to be more people that can help us go in that direction? 
I think there are some that are willing to go in that direction, that want to play in that childlike wonder of mm -hmm. possibility and who want to like learn how to play and be with the earth. And I think that there are going to be, there are people out there that are guiding us in that way. Mm -hmm. I think that we're oftentimes not attracted to them though, mm. because they don't have the glitz and the glam. Right. They don't, I don't care about Instagram. Mm -hmm. but, but glitz like, and glamour, really, what are those? Right. Like it's superficial. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's not your fault. It's not anyone's fault that we're attracted to that. We've literally been indoctrinated mm -hmm. and especially American culture mm -hmm. to like what's, you know, flashy, like mm -hmm. seriously, you know, Hollywood. Right. You know? And so when I see that, a lot of the teachers, like I have this teacher, y'all, I had the most amazing day yesterday when I went to that photo shoot and had mm -hmm. that experience. My photographer went to the parking lot to pick up the women and bring them to this ancient tree where we did the ceremony along the river. And as she walked away, I heard my name and I looked up and I stood there in absolute disbelief. It was one of my teachers from Boulder, Colorado. I'm in Oh, wow. 3,300 miles away that I haven't seen for almost 20 years. Oh my because gosh. My astrology, herbal medicine, and shamanism teacher. And there she was, this elder underneath this ancient elder tree. Oh, wow. In this moment where I'm going into ceremony, going into the magic, and I get to be seen by mm -hmm. her. And she was like, I don't have any clients, like, no one's coming. Well, why? Mm -hmm. Because she's not flashy on social media. Why? Because she's not Instagramming. Why? Because she doesn't like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, look like a goddess. Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, like she's not wearing the flash stuff. She's not, mm -hmm. you know, doing all the things that you, you she's not advert. You, mm -hmm. So we're not often attracted to that. It's yeah. like none of my teachers are famous on Instagram, you know? None mm -hmm. of my teachers post on any social media. You know, my most um, deep, profound teacher used to work at Pharmaca, which is like a pharmacy herb shop in Boulder, mm -hmm. like undercover shaman who sends mm -hmm. me poetry every week, but doesn't know how to even like, you know, attach a photo mm -hmm. to the email, right? Yeah. Like they're, mm -hmm. they're, in, they're in the cracks and... It's, Which is a shame because they hold a lot of wisdom. They hold so much. And there isn't this like, I mean, I, part of why I want to quit is like, I don't have the energy to market myself. I don't, do you know how, you know, how much work it takes mm -hmm. to launch a program? It's yeah. like, there's like at least a hundred emails within mm -hmm. a six week launch. Yeah. You have to send them. You have to create all then the back end of that that you have to do, and then the, it's it's so much work before you get to work with anyone. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Work. I'm an artist. Like mm -hmm. literally, that is like it sucks my bones dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. But we're expected to do all of that to offer all this free stuff to do all of mm -hmm. this back end. And then you have people on the other side who are like, it's too expensive. And you're like, you know, this mm -hmm. is like my life's work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're like, you know, but you, I bet you go buy a $20 latte or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like. And this is the, this is the realities. This is some of the realities yeah. of the healing here, arts, yeah, the healing arts. At, at a place of emotional burnout. Yes. Yes. You know, but I think that people find. Yeah, the right teachers, mentors, somehow they find them. That's the beautiful. Thank you for bringing that up, because I think that when we're open to looking for one mm -hmm. and to asking for that divine match, right, mm -hmm. to ask for the one, not that you're going to like learn your lessons with, <laughs> don't have to mm -hmm. learn your lessons with them, but somebody who's going to like, like, the question that I would ask myself, because I also studied with people who were 
abusers. I mean, I grew up in the eighties and nineties, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, consent and all of the magical things that are happening now in some, mm-hmm. some, some ways um, weren't popular in mm-hmm. my um, day as we know. So there's this thing about when you are looking for somebody to ask yourself, when you feel a yes, mm-hmm. is this a true full body? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what is it exactly. What is it exactly about that person that is your match? And for me, it's like, I think that I, I had a lot of trauma. So the trauma often overrides our inner knowing. It mm-hmm. overrides our, um, our instinct and our intuition mm-hmm. because we go into survival mode. And right. in survival mode, where we all are for the mm-hmm. most part, we're not in that state of listening. We're in the hustle, right? Mm -hmm. We're in surviving mode. So being able to slow things down enough to really be able to say, what is a yes and what is a no? Mm -hmm. And that saying, again, this is where the healing arts, uh, one day I'll do a podcast episode called Why I Feel Gaslit by the Healing Mm -hmm. Arts Spiritual, you know, because they say things like, if it's not a hell yes, it's a hell no. That's not true. Right. a, a hell yes could be a full body yes, mm-hmm. but like, is that a trauma yes? Right. Or is that a true inner wisdom? True yes, yes. Is that a, a wound matching yes? Mm-hmm. Or is it a true inner wisdom yes? Is that no actually resistance? Mm-hmm. Or is it an actual no? Like a couple weeks ago, after my beautiful beloved kitty friend died, I went to the Um, river again to do prayers and make offerings and I saw that beautiful tree I was just telling you about and I just stood there and I was like I don't Mm want to walk up to it and I knew that that was resistance Mm -hmm. because I just I was I'm exhausted with grief right and then I walked I was like oh it's resistance and I walked up to the tree and I laid into it Mm -hmm. and it held me right so what we often what is a no is often resistance Mm -hmm. So if we can get some of these little key places in the way that we understand how we work, if we can click into place some of those, then yes, I absolutely Mm -hmm. have hope for humanity. And I think that a healer, a shaman, um, a therapist, uh, a light worker, they may be able to begin to look at the difference because they ever we all have to work with others too i mean it, you know you just don't become a therapist or be, become a shaman and then that's it you're not working with anyone else because the healers need to also have individuals that they work with but i think for us it might be maybe that we can differentiate whether it's a traumatic no is it a but i think that the lay people, the general public, they're finding it very difficult because they don't really know how to do that. So and they, how do you find right, right. Too? Like, how do you find those people? Because there's like, if you want to find a therapist, there's probably like 700 online. Like yes. you have to sift yes. through all those people. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. Like that's a lot. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. While you're in a state of, I need help. That's right. <laughs> and now that's you're right. Like, right. Like 7,000 million therapists. Like, Mm-hmm. that's a, a lot to sift yes. through but when you find the right matches the right practitioner mm-hmm. they're never going to shame you they're never right. going to tell you that you're doing something wrong you're not doing something wrong it's that we've been taught mm-hmm. these things and they're going to whatever they say to you is helping you to understand yourself mm-hmm. It becomes almost like, I mean, I don't want to say a lifelong, but it is a lifelong partnership in a lot of respects. And it's a mutual respect for one another. And, uh, you know, it's a path that you're walking together. And I think a lot of people don't see that because that's the first thing they think, oh my gosh, you know, they're going to this person forever. They're going so long, they're wasting their money, they're wasting their time. But I think it really is a lifelong walking together. Yeah, because the, we feel that way because we ha- we don't value mental health. Mm-hmm. We don't value our psychology. Each of our mm-hmm. psychology on the billions of people on this planet uh, impact and affect our lived experience, mm-hmm. how we show up, what we believe, how you perceive, what mm-hmm. you perceive, how you digest, 
how you interpret, how you mm-hmm. express, all of that is why we are where we are. Mm-hmm. Right? All of it. So we need to have support. We It's in community that we heal, common mm-hmm. unity. It's in that place where we come together. And you reflect to me, I'm in grief, I'm a mess. And you're like, I'm holding you in that. Yes. And then when I'm like, fuck everything, you're like, let's not make any decisions today. Or mm-hmm. like, when I'm angry at the person who ran over my beautiful, beloved best mm-hmm. friend, like, and I want to like hex oh them, gosh. even though I would never do that. My girlfriend's like, you can, you are protected right now to say whatever you want mm-hmm. to whomever. There's a net Right, because you're in that, so right. you're, not you're in that stage. you're not anything bad, you know, but it's like, you've got to let it out. Mm-hmm. Right? But we need each other to reflect to one mm-hmm. another, to check one another, but not from the ego, but from the heart, from mm-hmm. love. And so what if we could create that in our communities right then right to I, sit there and 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 not right to sit there because at that time you're looking at the unfairness of it all because yeah. we are human beings and yes. even though we want to rise above that it's yeah. still grief it's still hurt you still gotta go in it yes you yes know, you've got to go in it and so what if we had our elders what if we had that therapist what if we had that shaman like to mm-hmm. me shamanism was my therapy. Mm -hmm. It was through earth centered traditions and healings and rituals and ceremony and not Mm -hmm. like sitting with um, hallucinogenic plants, just plants, (laughs) just actually just plants, like just being with my teachers and helping to have a, like to shift your worldview. Mm -hmm. For example, I had somebody come to me recently and they were like, I am afraid that God is judging me. Well, that's mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Now I need to know your worldview. Right, exactly. That kind of God. Where does that come from? Santa Claus. Right. That kind of God. Where does that come from? Santa Claus. Who, who's that? What is right. that? How do you believe this plane of existence to work? Mm-hmm. What is What is the perspective from which you experience it? Mm-hmm. And if we don't question all of that, if we don't look at all of that, then we're going to keep spiraling. We're going to mm-hmm. keep just circling, you know, yeah. and life is a spiral. That is true. Mm-hmm. But when we're inside of the wheel of samsara, as they say in Buddhism, as we're inside of this life is suffering, mm-hmm. what perpetuates our suffering is our perspective, mm-hmm. our beliefs, what we hold on to, what we grasp because light and love can't flow in contraction. Right. Right. You have to expand. Right. Expansion. Absolutely. And then a fact yeah. of this plane of existence is to know that with up comes down, with in comes out, with mm-hmm. expansion comes contraction. Mm-hmm. And so it's to know that every time we have like these beautiful opening moments, mm-hmm. there's going to be something that mm-hmm. comes and takes you down. You know, and then you're going to go into that story and then you're going to go into the expansive Mm -hmm. story. And then once we know how to ride that, we have a little bit more grace Mm -hmm. inside of our lived experience. So true. So true. So now let me ask you. So you're, you know, all joking aside, quitting and not quitting, but how can one actually work with you? specifically as a ceremonialist, because that to me, I find is so important to bring that into our lives. How, can, can they, do you have a website? Can people still contact you? Are you really taking a hiatus or um, can people work with you even online thank for you. ceremony? Yes. So a couple um, options. First, the mm-hmm. website is Earth Oracle Arts. And I will put that in the description box. Make sure that I have that there. And what I love, I just got goosebumps. Um, what I love about the name is that in Hawaiian, um, it's the vowels are sounds. So mm-hmm. a, a, e, o, u. So Earth Oracle Arts is e, o, a. So it's mm-hmm. a vibrational frequency, which mm-hmm. is just a side note of excitement for me as I pivoted from um, mm-hmm. what I used to share as Wise Room Medicine Path. So Earth Oracle Arts is where you'll find personal healing, Mm -hmm. um, personal ceremonies, or professional apprenticeships. So 
the professional apprenticeships, there's multiple options. There's mm-hmm. like three paths that one can choose into um, the in-person immersion where mm-hmm. I teach like ceremonial shamanic body work and in-person like ceremonial mm-hmm. training. And then the personal healing journeys, there's quite a few. The one that resonates with the conversation we're having mm-hmm. today the most is the resonance ritual mm-hmm. and it's self-paced as well. And then there's, um, I have a monthly membership that's like free for the first mm-hmm. month and then $33 a month. And we meet twice a month and my graduates and apprentices mm-hmm. and alumni also pop in and offer different mm-hmm. ceremonies and rituals to the community for free for the members as well. And then anyone that's in any of my programs, um, Temple of the Womb or any of the pro- mm-hmm. professional mm-hmm. ceremonial apprenticeships, they all come into the membership. So it's a beautiful mm-hmm. place for us all to just gather and mm-hmm. be with each other and learn from one another and explore the spiritual, emotional, psychological, energetic physical mm-hmm. aspects of our lived experience of mm-hmm. earth here <laughs> being a human and a mm-hmm. being a spirit in a human body now do you have any facebook uh, groups or anything like that also yeah. living life as ceremony is the facebook group because i'd like to list that as yeah. well for people yeah, who want to awesome. check it out now yeah. we you and i had spoken before and you mentioned that you're going to do some traveling are you going to be traveling across the country or just I- in the middle of the country? Uh, so I'll stop in uh, California and then Colorado. And then my thought is, because it's going to be cold, um, mm-hmm. to wait out uh, the weather a little bit and then find my way to Europe maybe mm-hmm. for a little while and kind of check it out. I feel called to a few places. And now that mm-hmm. my beautiful kitty pal past and mm-hmm. I'm um, leaving the island with grace and gratitude uh, I am untethered. Mm-hmm. So I have a little bit of time. And then when I'm in those places, it's kind of, for me, it's like a, a moment to maybe rewild mm-hmm. a little bit. Yes. And then uh, I'll settle somewhere and offer my apprenticeship. Like the more, the earth spirit medicine apprenticeship is more of the mm-hmm. witchy one. And I want to do mm-hmm. some of that in person as well. So we'll see, we'll see what gets dreamed up. And then in each of the places that I go, I might just like post on the groups mm-hmm. where I am and yes. gather together, yeah. then they can come book a session. I do one on one sessions with folk um, in yes. person, virtual as well. So Yes. And oh, I'd love if you come out east yeah, to let that. me know. That'd yeah. be great. I mean, yeah. I know we still have the same. <laughs> yes. When it's warmer, I was going to say, because we still have the same kind of cold yeah. that uh, other parts you yeah. know, of, of the country have. So it's still cold here, but yeah, if you come out East, that would be great. Uh, I would love to uh, get together. Hopefully yeah. you'll be able to make your way this way before you go out to Europe. Yeah. Community is so important to me. Yes. And that meeting people around the world has been always something that really like lights mm-hmm. up my heart and soul. Um, mm-hmm. I love my global community. Yeah. No, that's, that's wonderful. So if anyone is uh, that's listening, like I love, questions and I mm-hmm. love um interaction yes, uh yes. I'm an I'm an interactive artist so <laughs> you know anything that you want to talk about or share or ask about I'm here for it no oh, wonderful I'll make sure I put all of your contacts in the description box and I really want to thank you so much for taking the time I know that you're in the middle of getting yourself ready to travel and I I was so thrilled that you were able to come and speak to the audience today I do want to thank you okay. I want to thank you so much. You're such a joy. Oh, thank you. You are as well. Have a wonderful holiday season. And hopefully we will speak soon again. Thank you so much, Naomi. Take care. Aloha, everyone. 